I'll call this meeting to order February 6, 2019, select board meeting. And um, we will start with the consent agenda. And we have minutes from October 17th, October 18th, and November 7th and November 14th of 2018. I think the 14th is the 14th, please. Omit the 14th. Yeah. Okay. We have a resignation of Hadley Police, uh, Matt Golding. Uh, he did a very nice letter to us and thanked us for his time here, but he has moved on. We also have a common vehicular license for um, Inspired by Opportunity DBA Wendy's. And that's... Uh, what else? The use of the town common. Oh, we have the use of the town common. That's not on here. Um, it's on the other oh, back side. Yeah. Uh, Cars Cider House Valley, Valley Malt Town Commons Beer and Cider Garden would like to have Friday evenings from 3 to 9 p.m. on the Common, June 14th through July 5th. Um, do you want to take that separately or do you want to? Just added into yeah. the consent agenda. Well, Did you have any, any conversation? I have to abstain. Yes, yeah, just like um, And then there are four AP warrants and two payroll warrants. Okay. Okay. AP 1930, AP 1930S, AP 1931, AP 1931V, PR 1930, and PR 1931 uh, for warrants. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? And we're all set with the fire chief and everybody for the town common on the liquor licenses and things like that. They have not applied for their liquor license yet. This is just um, Nicole and Andrea and Jonathan and Christian are all here. Or maybe not Christian. Maybe he's going to sit there. <laughs> everybody else is here to discuss the use of the commons and their, their plan. The fire chief, police chief, and DPW director have approved the use of the commons, but no liquor license have been brought up at this time. Okay. So at that time, you will be applying for some liquor licenses, or one, to cover the four, four different people? For each day. For each day. For each yeah. day. Yeah. Okay. Did you have anything else that you wanted to add to it? Think so. No, I so there'll be a saying. structure. That, <laughs> there'll be a structure that will be left up on Town Common um, from those dates, from June 14th to July 5th. Correct. And is that a collapsible? It said posts and beams. So to me, that's wooden. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be you're going to build a post and beam pavilion. <clears throat> so it's a post and beam uh, pergola that. Um, so Valley Mall actually put this up at the behind the Massachusetts building at the Big E okay. this past fall. Um, so it is a temporary structure, but it is something that you know you would um, wouldn't think of as uh, being able to sort of fold it up and you know it'll take a, a good portion of the day and several people to kind of raise it up and mm -hmm. take it back down. Okay. Which end of the town? This on the north end <coughs> of the common that you're looking. The north end by the uh, waterfront. Yeah, between right between the bike path and Route Nine, but uh, closer to the bike path. Closer to the bike There's path. There's a sketch included on board docks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. We thought that would be the most visible from the bike path, and really trying to attract people to bike to the um, or take public transportation, and um, also thinking it would have the least amount of impact on the residents of that particular end of West Street. Okay. And as you know, we don't allow if it's raining, so I know you did see a provision there for parking that you would be parking at Hopkins, and you have that all settled with Hopkins on those dates? Uh, have no, you talked to the, we could do to the that. school department? We could do that. We'll follow okay. up with that. All right, so you do need to do that before, you know, so we have some idea of where your parking might be for that, those Friday nights. Okay. okay. I can show you a picture of the structure if you want. It looks like. Oh, okay. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else have any questions? Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
All set. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we have public comments from 7 to 7.15. We're a little past 7. Is there anybody here for any public comments tonight? Mm, no public comments? No? All right, we'll go into the start of the agenda then. Uh, we have do have people here, so we may want to get them out with this weather. Um, is the manager from Whole Foods coming? So appointments. appointments. Okay, so that we can't do that ahead of time. All right. Um, the board compensation. We have Booker. Six plus three. We've got change orders. What'd you say? 6.3 we can, we can do that. Okay, so Hooker Mitigation and Documentation Report, Mass Historical Commission. Um, the Select Board are asked to endorse the Hooker School Mitigation and Documentation Report and to transmit it to the Massachusetts Historical Commission. Uh, this report fulfills uh, the Mass uh, Building Master MHC requirement. Yes. Mass Historical, Commission. Mass Historical Commission requirement for a study of to the building prior to demolition. And I believe that our library trustees have done that uh, and submitted it to the Historical Commission already or not? The, um, Together. Together. The Historical Commission and the library trustees worked on the report. Okay. And then after it was done, it was reviewed and approved by the Histori uh, the Hadley Historical Commission by the Municipal Building Committee okay. and the library board trustees as well. Okay. But they've got to take a vote to transmit it to them and see it. Right, so we're asking that the select board, on behalf of the town, because we were asked, the town was asked to document the history of the, of the uh, of building. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is there a motion to? Shall make a motion to, uh, for the select board to approve this and transmit. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 <coughs> uh, we can do, and do you have a, uh, an event coming up on March 10th? We do. Um, as part of the overall uh, commemoration and remembrance of the building before it comes down, we're, we're the Historical Society is sponsoring an event on March 10th, Sunday, March 10th at 2 o'clock, remembering the Hooker School building. And we're going to have photos, all the stuff will be compiled. People, former teachers, students, you know, we're going to want to share the memories, say goodbye to the building, mm -hmm. and uh, and that will be that will be a nice event. We, we have posters all over town, mm -hmm. and we're still asking people and to if they have anything to contribute, t-shirts, which there are some, uh, photos, whatever mm -hmm. for, for the event. Oh, nice. Okay. Very nice. Bring up one thing about uh, or talking about her school. Mm -hmm. um, just there, probably not her parents, maybe her. Um, she wanted to possibly do a time-lapse camera set up somewhere on the construction site so that way you could kind of video the whole who wants to do that just just, just there, there. Uh, to video the whole demolition of the building and the construction of the library and that we could speed it up and do like a half the media or something like that mm -hmm. I, said, I, just, I said as long as it's on the way I don't see why not so, cool. could you put it on top of the library so so think it's yeah. Little down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so okay. is that something that we, mm -hmm. it wouldn't cost us anything so. yeah. Sounds like a nice yeah. idea. Yeah. I want to put in a time capsule for another hundred yeah. years, right? <laughs> Make a copy. <laughs> is there any time limit on this letter when it gets gets out? Excuse me. Is there a time limit on this letter that's going to affect anything? Or? I don't um, mean by a time limit. To the Mass Historic Commission. Well, we, we need to get it in them before the building comes down. Okay. Uh, for sure. That, that'd be important. Yeah, There's no be, formal yeah. requirement, yeah. but we okay. are just doing what they asked us to do. Yeah. They didn't give us like a deadline or we just felt it was a good idea yeah. and yeah. we're doing it. All right, and was there any, uh, has any of the historical people said anything about the plaque that's on the existing yeah, building? Yeah, we're, right we're, we're taking that plaque if, if unless, unless it's I brought reason. it up last meeting. And yeah. Yeah. Like this yeah. Yeah. Done we we might try to get the window, the, the circular okay. window up on top okay. maybe. Um, a couple of other things we, we can salvage. We've gone through the building, and David Tudrens and Jim. <coughs> we've talked to them. The bricks, of course, are going to be 
I believe, did you folks approve the sale of bricks? We did, yes. We did. Some bricks. Mm -hmm. And the hooks. And yeah. the hooks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hooks. Maybe the hooks. Right, the hooks. The hooks, yeah. Hooks. Hooks. Okay. The hooks. Mm -hmm. The hook. Coat hooks. Oh, the coat hooks. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 They wanted yeah. those cool. to be able to sell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what so if they want to go in there and take them out, we have said that they could do that ahead of time, which is fine. All right, so um, motion, please. Did we? We did it. We voted. Oh, we voted. Yeah. Yeah. We're all set? Yeah. I just want to thank Alan for doing that. He yeah. did a really yeah. good job. And, and, and Mar Marjorie Pratt Thompson from the Historical yeah. Commission, and Ellen Nabala from the Historical Society, and you know, it's a joint effort. Okay, yeah. great. Thank you thank very you. much. Yeah. Oh, but there's also a slideshow. This one you're going to have the media that we also did. Oh, seen it. oh nice. Uh, water abatement for 77 Mount Warner Road. The collector's office is requesting an abatement in the amount of $544.20 due to, to software error. The DPW has been informed of the abatement. Motion to approve the abatement. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Upstate. Quite uh, legislation support request. The select board is asked to consider supporting the attached legislation. And you'll lead the discussion, John. Mass Waterworks. Mass Waterworks. Legislation okay. support. The priorities. You wanted us to contact? Yeah. Um, the uh, Mass Waterworks Association is just backing these bills um, that are on the house floor right now. And I think uh, Joan Comfort's, uh, a couple of her articles have, uh, have a couple of these in it. Um, but this is just in support of, of the Waterworks Association. And uh, uh, <clears throat> in the uh, cooperation with the state and Actually, federal government too. If there's any available loans and grants, so the big ones really the idea the, that I took was the creation of a an infrastructure bond. Yeah, right? I mean, that's something we've been screaming for. Uh, well, on a state level, and it sounds like the federal level, they're looking into this pretty pretty heavily right now too. Mm -hmm. For water, sewer, bridges, roads, Every, everything's crumbling pretty bad yeah. throughout the whole country. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's just things we've been talking about throughout the years in, in the associations and the water association and the wastewater associations. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll make a motion to support. Uh, the devil's always in the details of how these things find their way <coughs> into the legislative language, but I mean, in principle, I certainly support all of them. Well, like they did last year, I hope they give a little bit to all the communities, not, mm -hmm. you know, well, you're a richer com community than this community is. It just percent percentage wise should be evenly amongst the uh, population of communities or something like that. You know, you should still reward people that yeah. are fiscally responsible yeah. too. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like us, every time we turn around, we're dropping a million dollars in a water system or in a wastewater system or infrastructure or some here. You know? Yeah. They, I can, they I can make, second just to keep it. Okay, just thank you. that didn't happen. Right, <laughs> they see that we have money here and there. Yeah. And and the problem is is that they're not taking into consideration the year old uh, water lines and sewer lines that we do have, uh, which run throughout the whole town, which is uh, quite a bit of money. Uh, I don't know the 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 lead one is is kind of a big issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much we we. Got lead, the lead connections from the galvanized line to the old cast iron mains. So we still do have a little bit of the, the lead in the lines, but very minimal. We've been testing for it right along for quite a number of years. So uh, they, they've been keeping an eye on and testing for us. So. Um, the other one was the yeah, Clean Water Act for the wastewater side of it. Okay. Sounds good. And uh, water resource funds. So, okay. I, I think what happened was when they had the money for all the uh, revolving funds and it kind of went away, they're, they're, they might possibly want to set something up like that if they can't get the grant money. Mm -hmm. 
So we would apply for the grants, and who's going to be working on those? Uh, Mr. Under, Under, Under the new DPW director, yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't really talked to Chris much about this. We just we had our first little tour together, so okay. But there's a lot. lot to so you'll touch base with him yeah, on, on yeah. getting it done. There's a, there's a lot to talk about. Okay. Sharon, Sharon's up on a lot of this too. I sent this to uh, both of them, okay. and I received it from the association. So. All right. <coughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, we can go back to the 715. Are we going to vote? Oh, yes, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Are we going to write a letter? Is that what we need to do? Uh, maybe, I don't know, Sharon's going to probably write a letter. In you know, support, support of all of these. And then we'll sign it. And then we can sign it or something. Mm -hmm. sure. I don't know if it'll have any. Any more support than it already has from the members and, and the organizations. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Seven fifteen. Do we have a representation from Whole Foods here? Yes. Hi. Come on, come on up so we can see you. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like me to be? Right here. Oh, right. Always yeah. the front. I want to sit in front of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Whole Foods is changing their store manager, and are you that person? Um, so to change your course, look for um, assent under Massachusetts liquor law. Correct. Okay. Yes. So are you in the person? Yes. Okay. Would you? <laughs> and who, <laughs> and who might you be? Would you tell us your name? <laughs> um, Jane M. Pearson. Jane M. Pearson. Okay. And you were the manager of the whole Foods, yes. or just the liquor part of it? No, the whole. The whole store. The whole store. Okay. Um, hard to separate those two things out. Well, sometimes they have different managers for different yeah, departments yeah, too. Different so, manager, yeah. um, do you have any questions for her? No. Jennifer, anything you want to point out in the application? Everything is in order with the application. Um, came in. It was right. They're 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 all set uh, for the change. And I believe Jane's been an employee there for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? With the company or at the store? At the store. Um, I've been back for 10 years now. Okay. The store mm -hmm. So how's Amazon treating it? It's, it's good because if rather than being acquired by another grocery chain that might okay. try to um, put us, make us in their image, mm -hmm. it's by a very different company. Sure. And so in that way, it's, it's been positive. Good. Good. Totally separate subsidiary area. They they really have kind of left us on our own. I think they wanted our um, perishables, knowledge and experience, and okay. certainly our stores. Yeah. Uh, make a motion to approve. Okay. Second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations, Jane. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah. 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 Pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. It's raining now. Oh, so uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Finally, it's all day we've waited. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, classification and compensation plan RFP results. So we went out to bid for a classification compensation plan. Uh, we received one bid back. There was a lot of interest in it, but we only received one bid back, and that was from Donald Jacobson Consulting Services. Um, they do a lot of work in the Valley. Uh, they do a lot of work in the Commonwealth. Uh, I was able to talk to town administrators who I know personally about their experience with, with uh, Mr. Jacobs, Jacobson, Jacobs, that's it. Um, <coughs> and it was an un uneven uh, response. Some were very, very happy with this work and others were, they thought that there needed to be some improvement improvements. So being armed with the information that uh, disappointed some of my colleagues, I think that we can move forward with this. The price is very reasonable, $10,000. We have a $14,000 budget for this. Um, and uh, Mr. Jacobs is a former town administrator, town manager, so he's done this work before. He was formerly in Amherst, and his last posting was in Plymouth. 
I was just timeliness because we were trying to get this done for uh, yeah. budget season. Yeah, so I, I told him time is of the essence, and so he does tend to work fast. He is a bit of a talker, <coughs> so if you can avoid getting into long conversations about baseball, then you're going to be okay. <coughs> okay, keep me away from him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For training time. Mm -hmm. yeah. The season hasn't started quite yet, so I think we might be safe. Um, so do we know how we're going to work with him? I mean, like, is there going to be a committee or? Uh, usually he works through the town administrator, but if you want to put together a committee, we can do that. <coughs> I'm just wondering, just to make sure that whatever he delivers matches mm -hmm. everything we need. Okay. We certainly have been looking for um, getting this done for <coughs> some time now on the compensation part of it, so um, that plays a big portion of what we've wanted to get done. So. Glad to see that we're moving forward with this. Yeah. I can make a motion to um, to accept this Jacobs. Uh, proposal and move forward with DI Jacobs Consulting. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Does, uh, does somebody want to partner with me to um, make sure that the project comes in as advertised? I'd be happy to. Maybe just, again, just quick check-ins, and I'm oh, assuming yeah. that Linda and Joan have some yep. participation. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All those in favor? And all the time. No, I don't think we voted. All right. All those in favor? Do we uh, do yeah, that? we did. We did okay. Yeah. I thought we were uh, we were doing more discussion. My I'm just, yeah, I'm getting this. <laughs> yeah, I'm not helping you. You're either. not helping no, me no, at no. all. <laughs> Something with this side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> you two down there want to vote on it for the third time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of when did you have a question? For, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say something. I'll say it continues on to the next one. Yeah. It's drifting. Okay. So next on that part of new business is snow plowing sidewalks. And this is an article that we actually took off um, this past fall, but we were, because it was such short notice for um, businesses at the um, oh. eastern end of uh, Route 9. So um, we're looking to bring it back again. We've had some issues um, this winter with the plowing and it's 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 really causing havoc with the state plowing route 9 and putting their snow on all these sidewalks that they built and we're having to take care of them which is um, manpower within the DPW um, which has been a little bit over the top um, there's no place to put it you can't push it back out into the road uh, we've had some <coughs> not so happy Oh look, didn't that go nice? Thank you. Okay. So we, Chris, the DPW director, and I had talked about this last week, and um, the decision was to stop plowing uh, Route 9 for now because um, apparently this is something that should not be our responsibility. And this is something that the state has just pushed on us because we've always done it. And so they just figure that, well, Hadley's going to take care of it. We don't need to. Mm -hmm. And so with all the new sidewalks going in all the way to Amherst, mm -hmm. um, what he had said was there needs to, needs to be some sort of agreement or some sort of arrangement with the state that either the state's going to take care of it because they plow all this stuff onto the sidewalks mm -hmm. or that the state is going to compensate us for the manpower and the equipment that's going to be needed to clear the sidewalks. Has he seen that negotiated elsewhere in the state? Um, that I'm not sure. Okay. But uh, he said that's how it should be worked, so I assume that he's but uh, I'll confirm that tomorrow. Uh, one of the issues we have is if you've seen them clear sidewalks in Northampton, they have this kind of tracked vehicle mm -hmm. with a snowblower mm -hmm. on it that's just wide enough for the sidewalk. Right. We have uh, that mower thing with a V-plow on it that's not quite as delicate as that tracked snowplow vehicle. I've seen them run we that mini-loader, right? Is yeah. what they're plowing yeah. with now? We've, they've got the mini-loader, they've got a lawnmower with a little V-plow on it. Back in 1968 or 70 is when they bought the old Massey Ferguson, which was a farm tractor. Uh, we had gotten rid of that because of its age and, and pretty much worn out. 
and bought a skid steer at one time <coughs> in 2000, I believe. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it wasn't too bad plowing it with the skid steer, but the unilotor is just not the machine for the sidewalks. Uh, when you get that much snow and that much material, I, I just, I, I'm not for this at all. Uh, we need to get into a discussion absolutely with the state with what they do to the sidewalks on Route 9. The town owns the sidewalks on West Street. The town owns the sidewalks on Middle Street. We've been maintaining them since the late 60s, early 70s when they had first put them all in. Uh, you're, you're always going to get a, a limited amount of time to, to get it cleaned anyway. You, you need a day or two to clean them, you know. But if we can't maintain those sidewalks, I don't know how the hell you think the people are going to maintain those sidewalks in front of their property. I just We've got all the heavy I just, say don't, I just say don't shovel and plow them during the winter time. It's too difficult. <coughs> you know, I don't think, you know, people really use those sidewalks during the winter. Well, we're so, actually they use them quite a bit on Middle yeah, Street. I was going to say, I live on Middle yeah. Street. Well, I'm, and, I'm, talk I mean, I'm talking those about nice. Yeah, the, route nine, the yes. route nine ones. The, I have but heard reports of people walking in the yeah. streets because That's the right. sidewalks yeah. aren't plowed. Yeah. But now so they're a little bit wider and they got the bike lanes. So, so yeah, it's not safe, but at least they've got a little bit more room to walk on Route Nine if the sidewalks aren't plowed. And so, uh, just to <coughs> be clear, he is going to continue to clear right here in front of Town Hall and in front of the Senior Center and the Library mm -hmm. and uh, basically the, the center of town right here mm -hmm. because. There is a bus stop and there is people Correct. that are coming and going in this area and it's the town center Correct. and um, what we talked about is there is well at least now there is no desire to stop clearing sidewalks on middle street or west street right now until either the town meeting decides that that's the case or we decide that that's the case it's mainly just the route nine sidewalks um, the new one that they put in down the down by the mall and toward the end of the line we haven't done because it's technically still under construction and still belongs to the state it's not it's not our responsibility mm -hmm. so uh, that hasn't been touched but like you said people have been walking in the streets and I, I do see yeah. especially by the malls people yeah. trying to catch the bus and, yeah. and things like that so uh, it's not something we can just say no to forever but uh, we can't really afford to do it either so on uh, a couple of few years ago when we had a few big storms it was a big issue with PVTA. PVTA is supposed to maintain their bus, their own bus stops. Mm -hmm. So, and they didn't shovel anything these two storms that we had this year. So, so do you want to proceed with us? Um, I think we need to see where the liability is going to lay down the road here. You know? it depends yeah. what your bylaw is. I was going to say, yeah, I, 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 I feel like this is an issue we have to work out, but I don't know if I want to vote. Or vote for this particular article just because of the wording uh, and that yeah. it doesn't it kind of excludes all sidewalks in town and I would like the town to right. continue to plow them yeah. on the the main area or the center of town here and it's kind of the, the thing with the DOT too, so I mean yeah. I mean if the DOT will pay us to plow their sidewalk their yeah their sidewalks however that works down on route 9 then maybe we should consider that but yeah I think we should allow Chris time to yeah, yeah. work but work on this and bring it back. But I'd like to still leave a marker for fall town meeting on this, even if it addresses the sidewalks on in front of the malls and have the you know them be responsible, since you know people petitioned the state mm -hmm. from green leaves down that area so that they could walk to the malls and those, shop there yeah, but those are the complaints we got from the businesses yeah. the businesses didn't sign the petitions for the sidewalks yeah. the people living in green leaves did right and they're putting mm -hmm. that burden on on top of the burden of state taking the mall property and putting a the sidewalk there in the first place mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm just saying I, th I think at this point you know we have a new DPW director he seems to have some other notions about how this should work maybe give him time to work on this with the DOT keep it as a placeholder but we'll bring it back before we take any action on it yeah I'd like to keep it as a placeholder maybe even do some research on what, what some other towns do with it you know, that's what I mean North Ham Northampton still maintains theirs Amherst mm -hmm. still maintains theirs what do you we just no, got no 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 yes no, Northampton do. does not plow any sidewalks yes they do no they do not I lived in Northampton you were responsible for shoveling your own sidewalks everywhere where the city owns the city plows 
Sheldon Field, they run a machine down there and they do the sidewalk on Sheldon Field. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Well, where the parking lot is and things like that, that's yeah. a bus bus thing. But, but I, so Chris can do research saying. and bring it back. Yeah, PBTA is yeah. responsible for their areas, mm -hmm. their bus stop areas. The state should be responsible for their areas and the town should be responsible for their areas. But which which seems simple, but we need to get the legality of it and, and see how it's going to work. Basically, we just need to let it stop being pushed upon us exactly. to, to yes. take mm -hmm. the responsibility yeah. and the cost. But at the same time, is the is the rest of the board okay with what we kind of decided at mm -hmm. the DPW as far as we'll continue to clear West Street, Middle Street, and the town center, mm -hmm. but the rest of Route 9 we're just going to leave at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Just yeah. to avoid property damage and things like that. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. You know, include Bay Road. Well, yeah, we there's just a little section. It's about, it's about six houses. Yeah. On Bay Road? Yeah, the sidewalk to nowhere. Oh, from the corner. Yeah, from yeah. the corner. The corner, the corner to his house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's it. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's got a dog. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you out there with a the snowblower yeah. the other day. Yeah. My dog. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, they did. Uh, well, they do Maple Avenue, uh, and there's a sidewalk up in North Hadley too. That by the North Hadley Hall. Yeah. Thanks. In front of the church. Okay. Do we yeah. need to vote on anything? No, we're just going to keep it as a placeholder okay. and just uh, um, we need really have need further to investigation yeah. into it. With we really attorney. need to talk to Chris and the attorneys and, and research this a little bit more in depth to see see where we're I at. I just wanted it as a placeholder. Uh, what I'm really worried about, Joyce, is, is who's going to be liable for this if we say we're Well, that's why we're going to yeah. have more investigation of it, but I just wanted to make sure that we did have it as a placeholder just in case. And, you know, the idea that we have to have it done immediately after a storm, I mean, the state, after this last storm, it took five days to clear off the bridge, mm -hmm. and, yeah. it, you know, it took them they had four two guys days. out there working for two yeah. days at a time. So because they brought a skid steer in with a snowblower that didn't fit in between the rails, and then they had guys with walk behind snowblowers pulling a bridge. I'll out. refrain from my comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, ra the the rail by the road wasn't there before, so they could put the wing on the sidewalk and yeah. clean the sidewalk off. But yeah. they took care of themselves there also. <laughs> have a roundabout to worry about eventually so that'll be fun too. okay mm. so we'll move on from that then uh yes. did anybody did you have any comments richie what you want to chime in on it well i didn't really want to get into it at this point here i just wanted to see what you had to say about it uh, it is a mess down where we are because mm -hmm. there's no there's no green space oh. so the yeah. sidewalk and the road there's nothing there. They plow 30 feet from the middle, and it ends up in front on the sidewalk. Yeah. Four yeah. foot pile on the sidewalk. And yeah. as as far as as the homeowner try to touch that, because yeah. the town couldn't even touch it with their wing. They couldn't even no. touch it. No. And uh, there's no place to put it. No. Well, and the other issue is well, you know what the other is. You have a letter on that. We we mm -hmm. should discuss that sometime, but mm -hmm. probably not now. I don't think. Correct. No. But we will. Yeah. Okay. And I would just wonder why? Why is all of a sudden is the state plowing from uh, the road and doing the sidewalk? On the, they never did that before. On the and then all of a sudden now, the last two storms, they're out there cleaning it up. Yeah. On a bobcat, they got a nice snow blower. Yeah. I I. I just wonder why they did. You know. Somebody had called me and I ran over there. And and looked and kind of laughed. It was yeah, they've basically taken from Cross Path Road. From Cross Path up. All yeah. the way up over the bridge, you know, into the intersection of Northampton yeah. for some reason all of a sudden. So. Yeah, all of a sudden, the last two storms, I mean, and they left it. Which is fine, they can keep doing it. But well, they should come this way a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. come west would be fine, but yeah. even with the snowblower they got, I mean, they got a big snowblower on that bobcat, yeah. and that throws some snow. Yeah. And we certainly wouldn't mind if they come through as long as they don't throw it 20 feet into my house. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if that snowblower will uh, eat the mailboxes up in the fire hydrant. Well, the mm -hmm. sidewalk they put in. So. Yeah. Well the, well, the issue too is the people that have uh, boxes out there, or I mean, they can't get through. It's just. I've been saying it right along. They did the same thing on that. Too. It's, 
They should either not let them have them or, but you know, people want to have their mail delivered. I don't know. We good for to, now. We need to resolve it. Okay. Good for, good for now. <laughs> We're all in agreement right now. All right. So we'll move on to old, old business. I think we're done with the new business. Um, Valley Bike Share Program, do you want to do that, Christian? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, at reported the last time, I think, that we wanted to be part of a CMAC grant to um, purchase, or the CMAC grant would provide bikes and bike stations for two uh, Valley Bike Share bike stations in town. Um, and we all voted, yes, we want to be a part of that. Told them we wanted to be part of it. They came back, said, you know, we'd like you to write a letter supporting this grant, but as part of that, um, that agreement, we want to have your commitment to provide funding for installation, electrical drop, that kind of thing, if we do get the grant. Yeah. And so this is no money, not providing money. that. No. <laughs> they, they'll provide, you know, um, a lot of funding for this these stations, but we do have to put up something in order to um, install them. How much is it? I think it's between I have it in a different email. It's, you know, probably around $10,000 plus or minus a few thousand dollars for the two stations. But I thought the conversation we had was that we would, if we were going to do it, we'd try to get sponsors. To so the sponsors would be, those would be providing the operational, operations and maintenance cost of the stations. So that would be additional. An additional thing to do to provide those stations. Mm -hmm. um, my selling point or thought on this is just that, as we all know, you know we're experiencing climate change, whether you agree in it or not. And this is, you know, we're experiencing differences in our climate. This is providing something to our town and citizens. That's an alternative form of transportation. We'd also be providing you know, bike stations at major businesses basically in town for people to get from other towns to our town to go to those businesses. Um, we do have public transportation. We do have the bike bike path as a great resource right here. This would be a little contribution to promote all that. I want to do it. I'm just, did, we did don't have check in to numbers on it. We had, when we spoke about this in the last meeting or two meetings ago, um, did you find out uh, how they could solicit the businesses to get these built and maintained or not? Yeah, we could the identify the businesses it. and then they would they would go and approach them. They being, um, I think it's called Bo Bogeen is the person that supplies the service of the Valley yeah. Bike Share, they're the contractor. You know, I, I would be behind something like that, but nothing that we're not have any, any funding in at all. So on here, it shows <laughs> sideways so yeah. sorry turning sideways here um, so in hampshire mall whole foods as one location town center neurotic rail trail as another and then mountain farms mall but isn't whole foods in mountain farms mall so are they going to put two there or is two so as part of this it would be two yeah this is crooked um <laughs> it would be two new stations so these are possible locations okay. And as part of it, we'd have to pick out where those locations were going to be. Um, and you know, I also don't know. Um, a lot of these, I think, would be more on DCR land than on town land. So we'd have to work something out with them as well. So is there a deadline we have to get in, or could we go to say a business and say, "Hey, if we do this, are you willing to pledge that you'll cover the installation cost too?" And that's where we get into the sticky area. That's what we were talking about. I mean, about and, that, and other towns, I believe, are providing, you know, these installation costs but, in cities. But again, we don't know what the installation cost is. We don't know. It's a concrete pad and yeah. an electrical drop. Yeah. I think the concrete pad is just a couple of thousand dollars. 
the electrical is probably the electrical is unknown because it's based on the location. You know, it really, I mean, it's site specific. And that would be a one-time cost, right? That would be a one-time cost. South Hadley, I believe, has two of them, and they did it under a little town common, and they did it in front of their police station, and they had power there anyway. So yeah, yeah. If it's right underneath a yeah. pole why with why lighting. Why haven't we really thought about Pride coming over the bridge? With the amount of area that they well, have. They, they want the, the bikes street. at a certain. Okay. Okay. You'd have to put yeah. the bikes yeah. out on the other side. And you'd want them at a place where people could either park and get a bike or oh, go to a store or they live nearby, something like that. Catch the bus, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I really want us to participate, but we have to figure out where to come up with the money and yeah. what maintenance would be. I mean, we could add it to our capital plan. We could take it to a town meeting to vote on. Mm -hmm. um, we could commit to doing something along those lines to find funding. I know within our operational budget, there's not really no. an extra 10 grand lying around. I'm no. sure if we had that, it would be sucked up with really something else, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know. Did we talk about CPA being a possible source for this? I talked to them, but it didn't seem like it was, they weren't jumping on it. Um, but I, I did talk to them because it's yeah, it's recreational. Water. Is that just because they're not in favor of it, or because it's not eligible? No, I think no, Andy and I could be in favor of it. Yeah, yeah, I've talked to Andy about it, um, and that could be something. That could be something. I mean, I'd like to keep it alive, but I don't. We're not in a position tonight to say yes, go ahead, because we haven't identified yeah. a funding source. I feel like they put us in a little bit of a tricky situation yeah. here because it requires us in a way committing and finding that funding source when we don't even know if we're going to get it so y you know can it could we do CPA and investigate that more and uh, I, I still that, yeah. some somehow I would like to see if they if they can uh, contact Hamsham Mall or Mount Firms and then the bike store right there or Quarters or somebody like that, we had spoken about. I can't you know. see it going on the town common. They had actually talked about it um, potentially being in front of like the good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be a great spot in the library or senior center because that's kind of in the center of town too. And it's proximate to a pole. Well, if we take down the library, <laughs> we might be able to do that. And the parking and the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I didn't want to enter that discussion with this. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I'm sorry, what did you say the deadline was? They need it when, David? It was like tomorrow or something like that, yeah, wasn't like it? Because I was supposed like to bring this up at our last meeting. Yeah. Um. yeah, yeah I think I, if they would come forth with, you know, uh, a couple of months. Couple more alternatives well, the, and a, and a the cost is, you know, I'm giving you that range because yeah. it is a range. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it says, it says February 6th. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we sign a letter, offer a letter of support subject to securing the Just what I was going to say. Funding? That's what I'm Just thinking, yeah. Make it contingent, you know, say, <laughs> say what you need to say. Don't answer the question that was asked. Right. There we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, say subject to either obtaining CPA funding or private donations to cover the cost and mm -hmm. we'd be all for it. So yeah. or, or just an accept, uh, acceptable yeah. funding source yeah. and then we can decide what's we can acceptable. Decide, yeah. yeah, yeah, because that gives us, I mean, if we don't get the grant, then yeah. that's okay. not a concern. Is that a motion? Yeah. Make yes. a motion to um, sign the letter subject to availability of funding. Mm -hmm. Second. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. And we will go to our favorite discussion, Senior Center, Library, and Fire Substation. It's always on our agenda, and we're always <coughs> willing to get this all moving forward, aren't we, this week? Um, we met with the uh, library trustees Monday night, and we have a contingent agreement. Um, David had reached out to 
the person at Caldwell, and uh, he really did not say there was anything on the table. Um, do you want to? Yeah, so I did reach out to Colbrook uh, uh, Realty Services, talked to the president, David, uh, Jack uh, Dill. Dill. Dill, thank you. Um, and uh, he described to me the process by which they came up with the price for the rental of Most Holy Redeemer. That process was that normally what they would do is they'd hire an appraiser, and the appraiser would give them a number, and that would be the number that they would offer to the potential renter. Uh, in the case where they're working with the community, both the, the church as well as the, the government, uh, they decided to do a survey of the price per square foot for office re uh, rentals on Route 9, and they took the lowest price that they could obtain, and that's their offer. So um, they also said if we wanted to make a counter proposal, they would go through their own process, which would involve the diocese in Springfield, as well as the parish in, in Hadley. So all told, it sounds like the, they were not particularly open to hearing a counter-proposal. Uh, Contrary to what we had heard. This yeah. afternoon. Yeah. There was an email this afternoon. Yes, but I think, um, and David talking with John Deal, that that's not what was said to him, even though it was said to your board of trustee person. But, um, David. Sorry, Joanne, what email are you talking about? There was one that David Moskin had sent, correct? Joanne? Yeah, there was, a, there was a proposal which is in your uh, uh, prepared by okay, David, David Moskin. Um, for reduced price of uh, Most Holy Redeemer. I, I'm sorry, from Colebrook? Or from no, from David Moskin. So he had suggested a proposed uh, lower price. So Based on what? I'm not clear. David had gone, Moskin had gone on his own to Caldwell, when he had seen that it was Caldwell that we were negotiating Col with. Colbert Realty. Colbert, yes. I'm sorry, I you know Caldwell's Colbert. Um, had gone down to Springfield to speak with uh, the person we, Mr. Scheib? John, John Dill. No, no, who we talked to, who did uh, we negotiate? Shibley. Shibley. And Mr. Shibley was on vacation and not there, so he asked to see John Dill, who's the president of Colbert. And so he had come to the conclusion after he had talked to Mr. Dill that we had not asked for a counter on the price that we had negotiated. And so he said, well, I don't know why you didn't come back and ask why we didn't do that. Um, and then proceeded to tell David, well, there could be probably some uh, reduction in the price between ten and twenty thousand dollars, which um, you know did say that in the beginning, but did say that to uh, David Moskin. So we had David reach out to speak to John Dill, and uh, he couldn't get him yesterday. Finally, got him today, and that wasn't the whole conversation that he had had with him. That. You know, th there was still a process to go to, even if we did do a counter, um, and that it wasn't. He never mentioned to you about any reduction of ten to twenty thousand dollars. No, he did not. And, and again, he emphasized that the process by which he put together the uh, the proposal that was in front of us right now is different from that we were a uh, commercial establishment. That so, two issues I have. One is that. Someone's out, and although I applaud the effort to save money, I think the manner in which they're, it's being gone about, uh, going out on behalf of the town or on behalf of the select board whose responsibility this is, is not a good thing. Because like you said, this was not a standard, 
evaluation process the, with the pricing they gave us. And so this is something that could be pulled off the table and they could say, no, we changed our mind. We're going to charge you full market value now. And then we'd be in a position where we don't have anywhere to move seniors uh, and, and build the library and senior center sooner. So, I mean... I but all in all, we, we did come to an agreement with the trustees the other night that they are willing to do the... Uh, we've come... We have I don't it's have 49,800. 49, so which would be on a monthly basis uh, for the rent over to Holy Redeemer mm -hmm. and the price that David can come up with. So we're good with that. Um, and I think they were good with that also. Correct. Yeah, we voted for it. You voted for it. All right. So. Um, do you have the, oh, you have it. He had the exact. I was going to say, yeah. He had the, he had the exact motion. But. Yeah, the, the motion was there. So mm -hmm. the, the monthly amount. For FY19 is going to be $5,650 and per, the F per month. per month. And then for FY20, it'll be $2,742. Um, so there was two there. The, the, if the project is completed on time, that's what the cost would be, would be the $49,000. Um, and if it's not completed on time, we just took this. We, and we this would go ahead. back and still negotiate again. For the but rest it would be of roughly what, if, 5, if they finished months. ahead of time, then they finished ahead of time. Sure. Oh yeah, so, so that, that would be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we just added together the two numbers at the bottom: the town's total unfunded shortfall requested from library for FY19 mm -hmm. and FY20. Added them together, Perfect. made a motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, so this just I think to be David was in the middle of saying something. I'm sorry. Oh. Other David. <laughs> Squire there's another Phil David. Oh, we're all set here. Okay. <laughs> yes, no, David. I, I, would, I was just, just trying to make the point that uh, I, I'm trying to say this nicely. I appreciate the effort to save the money, but people need to be a little bit more cautious about destroying a deal before we have something in writing and maybe let the select board or the town administrator take the charge rather than and I think he did it as a concerned citizen I think that it was, that right. it was yeah. certainly it was he wasn't acting wasn't. on behalf of the trustees yeah. he just mm -hmm. went down on his own as if you know David that that sometimes that's what he does and you know we appreciate his efforts and um, unfortunately there was a different story when we um, did talk to you know and that's what we voted in case today. that was the case. Ex that's why we took the vote and yeah. said, uh, and the actual motion said up to 49850 just in case, in case it came in the way. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, so I was just saying, I want to make sure that, so the trustees are okay. Yeah, we voted 5-0. Yeah. 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 I mean, David voted yeah. for it too. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was fine with it. <laughs> so yeah. he did. <laughs> So we're no, I mean, we're we, w with the idea that in good faith, someone right, yes. would go forward and, and check it check out. It. Right, yeah. yeah. And so that took place, so I think now we can move forward um, with our projects and get going. So what was our vote supposed to be tonight? To move? To uh, sign, the whip? sign the uh, lease agreement. Oh, uh, lease agreement with Holy Rosary. Oh, there Holy were just proposal. a couple of concerns from the senior center just on the terms like the hours for right. 8 to 4 instead of 8 30 to 4 30 yeah, i don't willing, know they're willing to change those okay those are easy and about change. their there are some questions dumpster. about their dumpster yeah, yeah use of the dumpster. and then if they one question that came up today was if they uh, there are funerals and they need to cancel the senior center programming can they still use the offices there or do we have to have do something the way different. I, well, the way I left it with Father Peter is, is that we would treat it like a snow day, that uh, we would close our program if there was a funeral. Program, but not the offices or the whole thing? The whole thing. Okay. That's what I, that's what I represented to the Father. Okay. And, I, and I, I, I suspect that that could be discussed at the time, depending on... Okay. What the need was, you know, like that would be the the absolute, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I sure if the offices mm -hmm. needed to be open. That wouldn't be a problem. I'm just thinking right. we have a staff. Well, well this is an, an so when I went and sat with the parish council and told them our programming and and about you know how certain things would be handled, um, 
you know, I did say to them, if you do need the parish hall for an after funeral, you know, meal or what have you, would it be okay to still be in the office for just the three people that are working mm -hmm. that way? And they said that they didn't see an issue with it, but I will double check. Mm -hmm. because you know this needs to be a win-win for them and for us so I'm not opposed to doing whatever will make it work but I did ask now I'm sure that you know yeah I think there's I'm sure that can be worked room out there to work out yeah. that three people in the office isn't going to right. infringe on right I mean they use the whatever. kitchen and the actual hall area right not the offices yeah. right so, yeah. right there's, yeah but if that, uh, if that turns out to be different, then we'll work with that. Yeah, obviously we'll, we want to be respectful to exactly. the family and the friends exactly. and, you know, whatever is appropriate we're going mm -hmm. to do. Absolutely. Yeah. If they're in their offices, I don't think that's going to be an issue, but we'll work that out too. Yep. I make a motion to approve the Colbrook offer from January 18th, 2019. And second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Because I we've got old one. Mm -hmm. the parish <laughs> so this took a Your lot turn. of work on that. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So we just for clarification on the payment. Yeah. Each yes. Month. So I assume when it comes to this payment that goes to the church each month, that we'll send a single check and, and um, use the two account numbers in these amounts. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we'll, we, you're not looking for a reimbursement for, or they're not paying. You know, the library is not going to make a payment to the town, and then the town pays the. No, no, no. Okay. No, we're going to do it right from the start. So part will come out of their article, and a part will come out of um, our budget. Correct. Right. Okay. Did I what she said. You're in charge. <laughs> what she With said. the money. You're in charge of the money. Okay. That's all I know. Yeah. Um, that's why I wanted you in on the discussion. Um, and, and one of the other things because we wanted you here tonight would be to talk about the uh, contingency money and how we're going to handle um, with all of the projects and I want everything to be the same for every project. Change orders, right? Change, Change orders. orders. Yes, but which deals with contingency. So that would be how we want to work it and how we want, um, I know the Senior Center has a sub-finance um, which I think every project should have, separate from what their building committee uh, is, uh, is what, well, this is what uh, I talked to Phil Palumbo today, and um, that's usually what's done. He keeps track of what the, the contingencies are and what is being paid out. Um, and then there is some wiggle room on how much we would want to allow this subcommittee um, to be able to expend, um, so that we needed to put a price tag on that. And the price tag I brought to the last meeting was twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Phil said usually they're around ten to twenty. Mm -hmm. I know that your PMO. No. OPM. 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 <laughs> 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 Whatever. He's having P. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah. Phil Market is ours also for the sub. Yeah. Uh, fire station. So it's Mark um, Zelda, but he said five to ten, right? Yeah. I, mm -hmm. ten. I had said five last time as far as right. what yeah. I was looking at. Yeah. So I think this is <coughs> to have in place in case on one day before we have a meeting that there needs to be a change order mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly we need to be aware of the change orders that are being done and I think that's where Linda comes into the loop of of knowing about the change orders and how how do you how do you think um, we should? Well, I, I know that Dave, uh, I did talk to David about this, and he's got some other information on this has been done earlier. I know uh, really the only thing I could analogize it to was um, when I my needing the warrant. You just signed the warrant for sending out payments, and uh, for the most part, we, we it can wait till uh, many of them can wait till you sign it, but we have to get things done ahead of the meeting. Um, but just part of the town's checks and balances is having someone else take a look at it and mm -hmm. at least to have, at, at least in my opinion, to have someone like uh, have one of the select board members or, or, and or David to also okay it with the 
with the building committees. Mm -hmm. um, I know that um, one of our earlier drafts of, um, of, of our timeline of expenditures and, and uh, construction progress, um, I know the OPM made some changes because there had been changes in the OPM fees, and so the designer and the, and the OPM fees were changed up the top. But they weren't changed at the bottom, so the total expenditures for that project at that point then exceeded the amount that was voted. Mm -hmm. So I think make, making sure that there's an eye on when you're going to increase up here, you have to go somewhere else in your project and see a decrease, otherwise you risk overruns. And that's what, um, I know David had some experience with that in one yeah, of the past so ones. So in the past we've had a number of projects uh, where uh, pe a number of people f had permission to go to the contractor and just say, can we change the scope of work here? And we ran into a situation where we were running short on, on money for a project and we had to go back to town meeting to appropriate additional. And at that time the select board adopted a policy that all change orders come through the select board only except in cases of emergency. Uh, you've got a copy of a letter to us in mm -hmm. your package that uh, articulates the policy, but it's your policy. If you'd like to change it for this particular project, uh, we can do that. But your policy was driven by a bad experience before. Yeah, I, I just picture the finance committee that's on the project able to process these changes in order to move the project along and keep it going and keep track of those minor changes. I mean, I know I'm on my finance committee for the, or on the finance committee for the senior center. So I'll be at every one of those. And if we identify issues that seem major, those will be brought to the select board. But I still think there'll be a lot of minor issues. It could be a toilet fixture or something along those lines that we need to adjust the price slightly but certainly when you're getting to 10,000 here 10,000 there 10,000 here oh yeah yeah it yeah. certainly can add up to a hundred thousand exactly you know, yeah, so yeah yeah you don't want to be able to have a committee and I trust everybody who's on the committees I thank them for their time but you still have to have some checks and balances on how much money is in the pot and how much you're actually expending so well, I, I think, I know that when we did the school, which is 20 years plus now, um, we actually had brought back the bills and the select board had to sign off on everything. Um, after the fact or? Right, because that's my point. You don't, you don't want to do it after the fact. Cause you're no, you want to do it before the fact. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we did it before <laughs> as it was moving along. We, mm -hmm. changed, we did the bills as they came in. Mm -hmm. So. So another way if we wanted to try to create some amount of efficiency but but also mitigate <coughs> the risk we could authorize that it, you know any change order we pick a dollar amount whether it's five or ten thousand I wouldn't go with 20 but you know five or ten thousand up to a cap of mm -hmm. oh that's mm -hmm. good right so that mm -hmm. in and so no, we have a cap nice saying like. once the change orders hit that cap then it's all coming in yep. in here. So is it a one-time cap or a cap between meetings? Do you hear what I'm doing? Yeah, I, I would say a cumulative one-time cap. Okay. Yeah. But we're a little different in that. I think the trustees are going to have to vote too legally because of our grants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I'm not, we're not. Yeah, so we were, the grant yeah, requirement we were sure about that. We want to have the same protocol that you guys are mm -hmm. having, but instead of having the ultimate budget be okay by the select board, we're going to have to make sure that that the trustees, since we're the people that are responsible for the grant. Mm -hmm. so. Well, you are responsible for the grant. I, I, yeah. I do understand that, but we are totally responsible for the whole project. Right. So in, in the bottom line, I think we have to work together on, on the expenditures and things like that. So Right. We just think there's an extra step for us yeah. to, yeah, to, to make sure that Correct. That, that you know the trustees are okay with it and it's not the building committee, it's the trustees mm -hmm. and then the you know, then the select board. The trustees are is more like your uh, finance. Yes. Overall. Yeah. Is what in this really, case it is it's really serving in the same purpose. Yes. Exactly. So, I got throughout the next year. Do you are you folks going to meet once a week on a regular basis? The trustees. Yes. Uh, we need yeah. as needed. Just as needed. 
Because I made a statement. I mean, we meet monthly, but yeah. we need <laughs> more. <laughs> we, need, we have a no. standard monthly meeting. I didn't I'm, meet until like <laughs> Yes. No, I, I'm just making a statement because the board, I, m I made a, a statement last meeting that we should probably just have a meeting once a week, even if it's an hour or a half hour, you know, for these issues when they do pop up so everybody's aware of what's going on. It's very well, important. And I think that's what, we'll, I mean, I think our building committee will have a different timeline than the trustees. You they, know, they might be needing so more there's, people there, than us. There won't be nothing hiding in the back corner. Right. Double oversight. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have a weekly uh, construction meeting at the senior center. We can just all meet there. <laughs> well, the, the problem is, though, when you, it's got to be. you can't have a meeting at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. what we need to do to meet at the construction you know, site. Right. And, I, and I said 6.30 was a better time for me, too. If you want to do 6.30 to 7.30 or something, post a meeting every Wednesday night for us, you know, I, I don't have a problem with that. If somebody Are, you're saying do that instead of delegating any authority? No, no, no. So that we, on top we keep of, it. On yeah. top oh, on top, do both. On okay. top of, do both. So we yeah. still have. Both. And, and are you saying just keep it posted so that even if you don't need to use it one time, yes. it was there? It's it's already posted it's and it's there. Idea. If we need it, just right. I see. we're meeting Cancel this it. evening and we've got an issue and we've got to take it up right I'm now I'm and get it over. All right. So how do we want? What's the amount of money? What's the cap going to be? And do you want to go up to fifty thousand dollars or? $75,000 capping. I was going to have it based on <laughs> contingency, <laughs> something based on our contingency. Yeah, I was thinking no, a percentage no, no. of no, the no. contingency budget. Yes. One time yes. capping yes. window. Yeah. I would yeah. say yeah. making Linda nervous over there. <laughs> I would know where they would, they can only expend up to 10000 at a time. At a time. Yeah. And time. not more than. Because we're going to have to bring it up for special town meeting in the fall if it goes mm -hmm. over any substantial amount anyway. Can I just ask in the respect of, and if, you know, if you guys know off the top of your head, but in, in the respect of building budgets, what the con contingent. contingent line item is? I think the library's 300 and something? 300 yep. and something thousand. Yep. Yeah. And senior center comparable? Ours went down because we had to pay for the additional right. out of that So is yours 200? Fund. Yeah, I think it's right around right. there. A little under. Because yes. we figured you, you expended like 100,000. On the extra. On the extra time. time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's more like 200000 So what if we said no more than 20% of the contingent, like cap it at 20% of the contingent line item, so the library Four cap would be like 60000 so, so you could have serial change yeah. orders, but once they hit 60000 Then we have to come in every time? time. Yeah. So I'm confused. So you're saying, I'm not judging, I was confused. So you're saying once you hit... Um, 60,000, then we would have to come in every single time we have a change order? Like, you're good, do you see what I'm asking? What or is it between meetings? H how about making it between meetings? That's yeah. kind of what I was thinking. Right. Because right. if we right. authorize 10,000, say, just say a number, 10,000, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. get whatever you need to do emergency out of the way, right. and then come for the next meeting, which maybe is, is two weeks or a week in between. How much do you have in your that clock. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. 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 And, and then if we have something that comes up where it's a major thing, then yeah. we then hold an emergency meeting and we all meet and talk about it. Yeah, and yeah. I like you that. Know. Yeah. But we'll that stay posted for every Wednesday. Not necessarily do we have to meet every Wednesday, but it will stay posted for in case we have to. I'm wondering if we should just post all, sorry. No, that's right. Post all, like if we just post it all, like in all together. Yeah, yeah, because there's, I mean, it would be no point for us to meet without you. I yeah. mean, what do you think, Allison? Right, either yeah. that or if you guys are posting every Wednesday, we would have to make sure to meet before you met because we would have to look at it, and then if we agreed, then it would go to you. I mean, if we killed it, you would never see it because we'd say that's no, right. we're You'd not going to do this. Yep. Um, but if we all said yes, let's do this, then we have to bring it to you. Mm -hmm. So rather than have it wait an extra week. So I agree, you know, it would be easier for us just to post together. That would be yeah. fine. Okay. Jane, did you? Well, I was just wondering if we shouldn't ask the two OPMs on the project to uh, come to one of these meetings. Since we're not starting construction instantly, mm -hmm. we don't have to make these numbers tonight and have them give us some input about what their experience has been and what their numbers might be. Phil well, told me it was 10 to 20. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, was, Mark, he was already here a couple meetings. Did he, did he do an upper number? No. 
that's the kind of number I think that we might get. I thought we're not going up. Number. It's our project. Yeah. No, but no, 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 I'm I don't think they, because there's a, there's a cap. We only have so much. Right. right. So if he's foreseeing in, in an emergency change order within one week that we're going to hit that cap of ten, we're done mm -hmm. until we meet. Yeah. My, yeah. my concern is oh, that they're going to say crazy numbers because it makes their lives easier if they say oh our change order limits 500,000 I mean because it's, oh, no, it's, no. it's easier on I'm just saying yeah, just, yeah. it's easier on them to, to do and it then, that and way. Your so. OPMs are watching yeah they are those, yeah. those things too that's right. their job to do that also yep. right. so I mean there's like many okay. eyes on it yeah Joyce could I say whatever burden it might be perceived to, to wait or to get the select board's um, authorization it's not a burden to give you notification right away, which is, again, how we handle the warrants. Mm -hmm. It's hard to wait. We're not going to hold up a warrant so we can get your permission at next week's right. meeting for bills that have to be paid now. Mm -hmm. But scanning and sending it to you by, by email is something we routinely do, and it's up to you then whether you want to look at it and see or whether something looks out of line and you want to call and ask about it. And I would think that you would want to keep the same kind of eye on, on these kinds of projects too. That mm -hmm. And then they would the committees would be off the hook as well. They say, oh, we're going to approve this. I hope it's going to be okay with the selectmen next week, but mm -hmm. they could just get notification out right away. Come on and, uh, you know, I'll have scanners and email addresses and just get it in and send it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we could always rescind if we had to, if it got exactly. out of hand it's or whatever, hand. but mm -hmm. it's, I don't think it will. It just, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not like we're giving it, giving it away forever. So. Yeah, and, and the nature of what led to that May 2017 there was kind of a different ball of wax going on at that yeah. point. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of confusion about who had authority. So, mm -hmm. so I, I mean, I don't feel like we're going against <coughs> that or loosening up on that. So I, I would be back to my original <laughs> statement of ten thousand dollars for the whole time of this project. Well, capping, but it, we we put a thing on there. Molly Perfect. said sixty. Um, yeah, yeah, I was thinking just if we want to target it as a percentage of the contingency budgets, we could make it up to a cap of 20% of the contingency line right, right, but, but we're talking about any one change or it can't be more than $10,000. Correct. Yeah. That's From week to week. Yeah. I think that's week. the biggest yes. thing. We right. don't yeah. want to do anything. No, we're not, nobody's yeah. going to do a change order more than 10, if that's right. the figure. Or five, yeah. or whatever. Five, whatever it is. Yeah. 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 But below that, we could. We've agreed I, with I think But we still have to notify yeah. the sports like when we still have to okay. review it every week. Right. No, 10 is the the fact. I think one that once the demolition of the old building is done and the underground work is done, I think that any chance of anything being major will be out of the way at that point. You've already done the borings on the senior center, so I don't see any problems with that portion of it. Tim is going yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he agrees with me. Uh, but until we do the demolition, I don't. I, I that's the only place where I foresee any trouble at all right now. And I know we've talked about it a little bit, Tim, and, but uh, on a construction side of it, and that's where that's where the OPMs yeah. are coming from. That's right. that mm -hmm. that's where the big money is going to be if there is a problem. Do you mind if I make a motion? Go for it. All right. Um, <laughs> so I recommend that we allow individual change orders or give authority to the project finance committee individual change orders of ten thousand dollars with a cap of forty thousand dollars between select board meetings i was thinking ten thousand dollars as the cap between select board meetings but maybe that's mm -hmm. okay i don't know maybe that's why i made the motion so yeah, we yeah. can get it clear <laughs> well, and yeah. yeah i was just being too conservative on the, the numbers but i just what do you know i don't know what do you guys think yeah you know, I, yeah. I would think 40 would be fine. I mean, you said 60 because that was the percentage. 40 per week. Um, so that's a lot of money over a year project. No, that's just no. so. Uh, yeah, but I, I thought. That's just. I took that. I took that. Per. That's a lot of money. Yeah. 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 No, I, I took we the clarification. Was either. Either. No, I don't. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's why I'm getting until we meet and then we reset and well, then, then they can authorize another 10. 10, uh, 10, a week, 10 and weeks, 10 weeks, 52 weeks is how much? That's only exactly. 300,000 on the library side. So, right. no so each meeting, I guess. There's no cap, but each meeting we would reset the 10. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's kind of what I think 
David and I are going to keep a tally of how high we're going. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can you say that again? Ten, ten between meetings, no cap. No cap. Yeah. yeah. And anything can happen in the meeting. Yes. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. But you're okay. still bringing your bills to the select board at that meeting. So yeah. even if we spend yes. it, we're still going to bring it to you. Right. Like yes. if we get to that time, we're still going to bring yes. it to that and meeting. And then over time, if you see it, you're getting 10, 10, 10, 10, yeah. it's adding up to $150,000. What's going on? I, yeah. I, well, that's why you have an yeah. OPM to yeah. stop that. I, I really hate yeah. to be yeah. like, so <laughs> and I, I don't, maybe you would be willing to just, um, I think it would be great to have it in writing. Do, do you take the minutes, like, like official minutes? Like a guideline minutes? as far as yes, yes. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we should just excerpt it and ex take an excerpt of it and, yeah, and get it back to the committees. Yeah, yeah so just so we all have it written down and we all kind of have it in our heads and yeah, manage so it properly. Something that we hand out at the pre-construction meeting mm -hmm. so that everybody knows no. OPM, yeah. architect, Can I ask, you ask Christian what the, what your, what the finance subcommittee for the city center consists of? How many people? Uh, I think three of us, yeah. Uh, it's, I think it's the three of us right here. Jane, myself, and Suzanne. Yeah. Okay. So we would have something in now just to that, no, right? The trustees. The trustees. Yeah. But that basically we would be processing, you know, talking with our OPM about the change orders, right, right. OPM looking at them and kind of saying, yeah, that looks good. No, that doesn't look, you know, we need more information, whatever it is, kind of. And I think at that those. point, the OPM will be coming in with whatever it is anyway yeah. and explaining right. it to everyone. Right. So. Yeah. Motion on the table. All right. So I can redo it. Yeah, I'll modify the motion. So hey, you guys are making this way too hard. <laughs> <laughs> Make a motion that we authorize the project finance committee $10,000 of spending without we don't, per week, I did. Per, per week? Mm -hmm. do we want to we say or between select be, between select board meetings yeah. yes. without select board approval delegate authority for them to authorize up to ten thousand dollars in spending Change without meeting. select board approval Change yeah. between meetings to be reset on a weekly basis or contingency spending could go. you not say Project Finance Committee, because not all of us have that set up. We, you still we have can name the Project yeah, Finance Committee yeah. and make it whoever you want. You guys okay. are still the Finance okay. Committee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we can talk about that maybe at our, our next. We did talk about that a little bit, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what, all right. We got a motion on the table. Yes. Or second. <laughs> or I'll second your motion. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any further discussion? No. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And that will still be in place, too, for the sub-fire station committee also. So yeah. We'll yeah. We'll Just for the terms of the project. Yeah. All three. I have yeah. a yeah. tomorrow night. Yes. So I have one nerdy kind of question about reporting. I know Alice, I haven't been to ask Allison, so I'm sorry. We're kind of, um, the reporting that will come from the tap, like, are we going to have a reporting structure about how much money has been spent and, like, where we are, like, do we need to formalize that at all? Your OPM. <coughs> OPM. Yeah. Yes, but as far as the town kind of having paid, do we do we need to really think about every? Well, we have. Yeah. The budget. Lindsay, we you have do the a running line. tally. We That's you. Reports. We have reports. Reports after we spend. Yeah. Can, we have. Linda, can we you can do a weekly tally? Yeah, just like a weekly. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the, yeah, once once you approve the bills, they're going to be paid mm -hmm. on the next yeah. warrant, yeah. and then. You can be provided with updates on those. I just think the, it's good that we know projects. that we're always in sync. Sure. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is that going to be too much for you? We. It's it's all. It's one more thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know that you really want, you want weekly really. We no. I would say monthly. How about I was going to say how about the week that you're not meeting or something the other. That would be fine. Or every two monthly? weeks or something. Or even whatever. as needed. What if yeah. just groups can just come to you right. as needed and get a turnaround time of you know a couple of days or whatever. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Oh, yeah. I I said you can ask for more or less. Or okay. I can there tell you help I need less or something. Too much work. Yeah, let's Let's play by let's see how it goes. Yeah, let's get started that way. Okay. Yeah. On that. You know, we already have to do yeah. reporting to the state right. because of our grant, and we, which includes reporting on how much of the town we spend, and that's a monthly report. So right. a, a monthly report should suffice for us. Um, okay. Let's let's do that. Let's see. We'll kick it off a little bit more often, and then. Okay. Okay. Sure. That's good. 
We'll just go with that. Can we talk about town hall, my favorite subject? <laughs> yes, I just want, let me just throw out, let me, um, sub fire station, we're meeting tomorrow. Um, we can go over this tomorrow, but we were meeting to do pick colors because we're going before the uh, planning board with our plans on February 19th. Do you, do you want to check about the you, before we do that? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, yeah, do you matter? Yeah. yeah, first, and then we'll come back. To so the there's sure. been, just, there's been some um, concern from a certain individual about the placement of our sub-fire station, so I just wanted to bring that out, that um, with the building committee, the uh, Municipal building. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'm really I'm, I'm losing it tonight. <laughs> Municipal building committee. Um, they were all in agreement. Also, when we did the the plans for the sub fire station to put it where we located it, um, so that there would be. Because I have a. We didn't really do the site. We looked at the. Building, no, but I mean, site. I had I have a text plan. from David that I had texted him and asked him about and. Putting it where it is, it gives you a little bit more availability of the rest of the property of future use. So that was one reason why it was put to the north on the property and not to the south property. Mm -hmm. um, and he had done some schematic type of things with playing fields, even though it might not be playing fields, but just showing the use of the property and what, what was there. So, um, so that's the reason why it sits to the south just slightly off, but it certainly is convenient enough to go down to Stockbridge if it has to, so. Yeah, everybody um, originally thought that that intersection was going to be the driveway. It was no, going to be like stri original, a straight shot. Yeah, original. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's not. So um, this works out very well for the placement of it and for the future use, use behind and to the side. So, um, and again, we did have some. I think the problem is there wasn't a good explanation to a lot of people out there because mm -hmm. there was an anticipation of where it was going to be, and and they got. I think changed. from the get-go, it was pretty yeah, much. Yeah, it's like everything else. You guys had your public meetings and you we stated did. the reason, and but nobody knew about it. Nobody listened. Nobody listened. We know how that It's like kids, you know, they don't listen to you at all, do they? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. So now town hall. I was going to say one uh, of the things that keep coming back to us that. Well, what if we want to put a future DPW annex there or mm -hmm. something like that? Mm -hmm. And uh, I know with Marlo and Chris as well that there's no immediate desire to put that there. So, I mean, the mm -hmm. idea that we're going to be breaking ground on something like that anytime yeah. soon is, is not likely. So, yes, it's good to plan for the future, but at the same time, we have to do what's best for the fire station. I think yeah. one of the things we talked about, too, was there need, there's a need for a... Uh, animal shelter type of thing that right. you know for animal control animal, animal control. control so that was also brought up for behind the sub fire station at, at some point so that was another use of part of the property possible use yeah. possible mm -hmm. use so yeah so that's that's that and so we'll get into your favorite no nope. nope. oh, no tobacco, tobacco barn tobacco oh tobacco barn, barn. <laughs> yep what do you want to do with that do you want to um, uh i've had two complaints from two other farmers the just want to have uh, open bid on the barn rental for the use because there's still some tobacco farmers around, some squash farmers around, just for for harvest. So I think that's what the person was that was using it was using it for tobacco. Yeah, I, I know. I Joe, he's here this evening, but uh, there was some other interest in it, so. I think just to be fair to all the farmers, if somebody's really interested in it and they send us some kind of proposal, big proposal, short and sweet, by next meeting, I'm sure we can get this ironed out. Is that enough time for a legal announcement? or? Yes, so the, um, the amount of money we're talking about is both way below the threshold, I so know. we can expedite this. Yeah, just keep it as minimal as possible. Uh, advertise it and however we do it. We did vote last week to yeah. keep it there, we did. to renew the lease this year. Yes. Yeah. In the meantime, I, I'm reopening it. Well, I, I mean, I, I just feel like at this point we should. We had already voted on it. We acted yeah. in good faith and we should proceed in good faith and then maybe we can talk about it for subsequent years to open it up if that's what we want to do. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, it's only going to be for the use because we really can't separate the property. Um, it's going to be a construction site. So he's yeah. going to have just use of the barn. <coughs> Joe? Hello? It's Wally. 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 Sorry, I I David, David's <laughs> head's in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> you hey, Wally. So we did vote on that last week about um, allowing that. So I, I hate to say that we would go back in bad faith and not honor our vote from our last meeting. Just bringing the complaints to the table. Oh, I know, but yes. sure. why are they always so late after the fact? Well, there's my contention. No, I mean, I, I understand why it may have, have been brought up, but again, so my, my vote would be to, um, you know, proceed as planned with Mr. Sikowski, and then, again, we can address it next year, depending on whatever the conditions are next year. Yeah. I think put it on the calendar for maybe December time period. Yes. That way we get well, yeah. after, after harvesting to, when, uh, when you're done, yeah. we can put it back yeah. on the table again. Well, I mean, this time of year, first of the year's fair. I mean, you don't have any more produce in there. No, it's just empty bins. Yeah. Okay. Do it this time of the year. Mm -hmm. So, is there a motion to con to keep our? I, yeah, I just made that. Okay. Second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Okay. Now we can talk about town hall. All right. All right. <laughs> We're all set, Wally. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Wally. Um, so we've gone for several months now, back and forth with town hall layout plans. Uh, we are at the time period where we should be starting construction or scheduling construction next week, really, in order to get this done. I think they are. It, well, for some of the renovations, yeah, yes and no. So, the first floor and second floor layouts are in board docs. Um, disregard the interior furniture placement, that kind of stuff. What we're mainly concerned about is wall locations and uh, the removal of the unused safe that's downstairs in the front room. Uh, those are the main items that are going to be taken care of. Uh, I think all of the departments have been made happy enough to deal with it, with the exception of the assessors. Um, I asked Tim to come to kind of talk a little bit about timeline. How long do you think this will take uh, as far as the wall placement in the assessor's office? Or you know, how many days, weeks are we talking to get this done? What kind of disruption are we looking at, and and uh, are you doing the work, you know, late at night, early in the morning, that kind of thing? So. Well, it is um, being controlled by Gary, but right. on your behalf, I, I since Gary couldn't be here, you asked me to come. Yeah. Uh, the, the time frame is very minimal. The contractor is willing to come in early one morning if everything's moved away. He's willing to come in early build the wall and rock one side before town halls opened up so the wall would be up mm -hmm. then the following day we would early again get the electrician in to put in as many outlets that are needed within the walls based on any type of furniture layout for the room mm -hmm. this is only working in the assessors because the other room would then, the other area could be uh, worked on during the daytime. There's a light fixture. One of these would have to be removed uh, for the placement of the wall. That can be done very easily too. So the time frame is very minimal. Uh, disruption is really just moving the furniture. I do agree with um, uh, Dan trying to get the furniture that he has to fit in there that the best alternative but it's only my what I'm perceiving on, on trying to <coughs> lay a layout form that uh, at some point we really do need to get rid of this counter I think the room probably would uh, work much better for him with the counter and the wall gone again that is something very minimal that could be done you know, at night or time that uh, that would not disrupt him. So we're talking a week, two weeks. We, 
again, <coughs> the amount of time is hours, but yeah, yep. it would be done Sounds within, like within a week. week. Yeah. Easily within a week. But yeah, the, the, the issue is in the contractor knows that minimal d disruption to uh, everybody. The only big disruption is going to be when the safe is moved out. Other than that, it's going to be extremely minimal. So uh, I heard today that there was discussion of delaying moving the Board of Health or delaying moving file cabinet locations. Yeah, I can interject because I, I threw my hat into the ring today, unfortunately. But I think um, what I'd just like to say is I'd like for us as a select board to come to agreement tonight what we're going to do with town hall exactly and just kind of make a decision and be clear so we have a clear direction moving forward. I think what we can agree on is the park and rec office and what's happening there. Mm -hmm. um, that seems good. I think we can agree that we need a second meeting room um, up here on the second floor. I think that the one area of um, debate is about the assessor's office and the Board of Health office. Um, the Board of Health office, as shown on the new plans, is essentially the same size as where it is now, I believe. It's 10 by 12 foot 3, except it's up here yep. instead of downstairs. When we install this hall and move this wall in the assessor's office, we're losing square footage of office space. And that hall might be a challenge to get furniture in and out of the Board of Health office that's proposed to be new. So one thing we discussed today was making what's on these drawings on the first floor file room and storage and keeping the um, Board of Health office on the second floor here and trying to modify their space so they have more space in that existing square footage. Uh, one problem <coughs> is, is that file storage for um, the Historical Commission um, I think the Conservation Commission would be in, in the assessor's office, essentially. So can they go in there and access it and get that information without disturbing potentially confidential material in the assessor's office um, and, and the safe? I personally am leaning toward keeping the, the Board of Health office up here and making that file storage because I do feel like we lose square footage by adding that hall, it's an extra expense, all those things. But I think it's a decision that the board here has to make because we kind of have two sides, so to speak. Well, that, that was the same question I had posed to you, David, right? Yep. Like, why were, we, why were we spending the money on building a wall just to move the files down? So, so do we, in town hall, I'm just, I'm sorry, I didn't mean pick up, but I mean, yeah, you, you've yeah. been in it, you know, I mean, or whoever wants to chime in. Do we ultimately gain anything long term by by building that wall? And because, because I still subscribe to the theory, like, the less we had to do, the better. And so, if we just left the files up here where they are, um, I'm sorry, if we move, put the files down on the first floor. The only objection that I had heard was that some of the folks on the Historical Commission and Planning Board, it would be less convenient if, if on the off chance, and it's an off chance they needed to access it, they would have to go down to the first floor, which is no different than what happens in our meetings if Jennifer or David has to run downstairs. I don't think it happens very often. So, but you, you had some more conversation about that, right? Yeah, so um, one is that the meeting room upstairs, if if we are to convert that outside atrium area for the Board of Health's current office to a meeting room. Mm -hmm. um, the, if, one right, the door right yeah, here. Across yep. the, yeah, across the mm -hmm. hall there. Um, if there is, say, the historical committee or somebody holding a meeting in there, then the Board of Health can't really access their office without interrupting any meetings or the other way around. Um, that was a concern that the Board of Health had. Um, I talked to Emma Dragon. I didn't talk to the other Board of Health 
um, officials. But as they are trying to move to a more um, professional, more active role, um, there's a good chance that they're going to be there quite a bit more than they are now. And so... Being on the first floor. Yeah. At, at her personal opinion was that they would prefer to move. And now that, obviously, we're not just basing that on personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, so that, there's that argument. The other argument is the assessor's office currently had, just had its locks changed because of the fact that he didn't want other people or they didn't want other people to be in there and have access to that office space, never mind the safe. But now the proposal seems to be that, oh yeah, you can put your files in the back of our room and whenever you guys need to come in here, you can access them and get at them. So something's not quite matching up. And then on the other hand, I was also told that there's some sort of rule, policy, something or other, that only the people that are using those offices should have access. For example, the treasurer's office, only the treasurer should have access to it, but I don't know if that's a real thing or not. So I think there's a lot of um, just lack of clarity of, of how, you know. I, well, I don't think that other people need to be in other people's offices if right. they don't need to be. Right. I mean, everybody's sure. office is their own office. And you certainly have certain files in your office that are confidential. For sure. And we also recognize it's yeah. the town's office. Right. Yes. Right. It's the town's building. But that's all right. But it's still for something. Yeah. yeah but I so mean, there are there are. I mean, we don't know how they only keys. Yeah. Right. No. So I, I, I think I right. think we all have a master key. Maintenance. We don't. No. We don't. No. no. That lock is different. The sensor reflector or the. It was changed. I don't want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get yeah. in their office. I have no business in their we office. We don't even know what the key works, and we never try it. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I don't think that that's an issue of, of, of that. I think uh, whoever is going to be using that office, whether it's the Board of Health or the assessors, they're the ones that should have a key to it, Right. period. Yeah, and the, the issue is the file storage. I mean, it would be much easier for me to accept or be good with this first floor plan if we could just put a door in the office somewhere else but the fact that we have to build the hallway it just takes a lot of I mean it takes a lot of square footage to make that hallway out of an office space that we're already short on office space on and you know I was racking my brain earlier today thinking if we could put a door you know underneath the stairs a little door <laughs> or something to get in there but it's just really tricky right. to be able to either office is just really hard to get into um, and it's not ideal uh, that's kind of the difficulty of this decision well, can I ask a question that that Board of Health office that we're building is that ADA compliant the width of that that little hallway that would go into it no it wouldn't it wouldn't be it's three feet wide it, the, the hallway is but the door isn't and we're not going to change the doorway right now no. I mean certainly like any a lot of these offices if there was a need for accessibility. You could go somewhere you else. You can go someplace yeah. else. So yeah. that's, that's no, I was just trying to gauge so how narrow that was. It's three feet. I mean, it's the standard width of any hallway. It's the same, it's the same mm -hmm. width as your... That's that's the way we're working in Norway's now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At, at so um, almost all furniture can go in there. I mean, it's three feet, but same width as probably most of the hallways in a house at this point. Mm -hmm. It was just an idea trying to fit as many people into this area and having as much privacy as needed for some of these spaces. Right. And yeah, it's one area, yes, you're going to lose space because of a hallway, but um, the privacy issue, I mean, the Board of Health was, she is bringing up the issue with privacy. And that's the only reason it's uh, yeah I totally get that I mean it's I'm it's, uh, I'm not trying to be critical of you or anything oh, like that no, it's I, because no don't th you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Me. all I did was put it on paper yeah 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 and, and so it's trying to fit a lot of stuff in space we don't have a lot of space for yeah. so David, that's what it is real, real oh, quick before David yeah. uh, okay. the, the other thing I heard today was that if we go forward with the plan the way it is here that the assessors could not do their job for months, weeks, there'd be all kinds of disruption and issues and based off of what we just heard of talking a week or two, you know, for construction and off hours, that 
that's not the case. So I just want to make sure that everybody that works in town hall doesn't think that they're going to be disrupted for weeks and months at a time here to make this happen. So, so are are we planning on the planning board using their room as their meeting? Their meeting room in here. Well, here and they're then they're here. Yeah. So why why do they need that big a space over there? Mm -hmm. They have uh, their scanner all their files they're going to try to fit most of their files into that okay yeah, all the files all the files are going to go in there the yeah. scanner. and the scanner the everything scanner. the planning board needs will be in that yeah. office okay that was yeah primary reason for that okay and then and the scanner also to be accessible for you your office and for oh, for you and for conservation commission <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. so Chase, i think the, david's been trying to say something finally yes, get the I scanner know. in use <coughs> And put all these plans on it. Uh, <laughs> it be nice. That's the plan. Well, we, we talked Absolutely. about that and getting somebody yeah. to come and help us yeah. with that. David, you had something to say? Yeah, I'm so just inquiring about the, uh, the, the estimated cost for the renovations on the first floor. Mm -hmm. I know that the uh, removal of the old safe is $3,800, but I don't have any any estimates as to the removal of walls in the building of the new wall, so relocating two doors. So do what I have for have in that? ballpark from Gary is um, we're looking at a roughly a total for everything the way it is now of thirteen four fifty, and that's that's with the DPW and with the engineering assistance of Tim doing some of the bracing that needs to be done here for the floor and not having to pay an outside contractor to do that to move it because the floor needs to be braced in order to move that six thousand pound safe out of there. Uh, it's just minimal temporary bracing. Yeah, it's so just temporary bracing. It's not going to The plate that and get it out the front yeah. door. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, is that, and that's ballpark. Yeah, that's a little concerning. That's more than what I think we have available funds, but I'll take another look at it. Because, yeah, initially we were talking 23 ish as a, yeah, as a goal. So, hopefully. You know, I mean, do, does planning board really need? The privacy in in that room. We have you spoke with them. The only <laughs> issue just was to make, to make more room, Tim. It'd be easier to take that wall right out and just open this thing right up for. The whole idea, the whole reason for planning board where in that room is because the issue of them wanting all their files in one in place. place. I mean, when yeah. we first started looking at it, it was split between two, but luckily, with them over there everything fits and that was the whole reason they okay, went there good. and that's what the whole thought process was was just trying to figure out what everybody had and where things could go and that's there was a few switches around uh, between rooms based on comments from everybody the sellers out i mean we had <laughs> dehumidifiers and we had a lot of them plans down there originally stuff you don't use every day well, I talked to David. I, I think one, we what we need to do in town hall is is look at what's stored in the um, the well, room downstairs. Yeah. I talked to David about well, if we don't have enough, can we use CPA money to actually build another room down there and uh, for preservation of files? And yeah. he felt that that would be a pretty good thing. We can certainly look into it. Look yeah. into that. Have a municipal building follow through with that and try to expedite that. Yeah, um, yeah. it's going to be tight for everybody, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, but to, to free up a little space, even if it's mid midterm, a couple months down the road, at least it's... Again, I, I, it's I think option one needs open. to look at what's in some of these offices and, um, uh, you know, what what's actually being stored in some of the offices. Could that, the storage, be utilized to other places. And I think that's one of the areas that we have to start looking at. Yeah. Uh, you go into some of the offices, it's relatively okay. Yeah. Um, things are stored downstairs uh, in, a, in a neat way in that storage area. That's, I mean, the, the putting the wall in, yes, gives you another private space. But looking at the assessors, w how much square footage there is right there. You guys make the decision. It is it is what it is. What's this meeting room across the way? What was that for? 
Well, basically, one of the problems we were running into is that there was a lack of availability, especially during the day, for different departments to hold meetings, and especially after hours for different boards and committees to meet. And so people were meeting at Hopkins or wherever. In the hallway. In the hallway. Yeah, yeah, we're we're in the hallway. Right. <laughs> yeah. So at least you'd be able to have a meeting with... And is there a file room and storage in there right now? Where? Across Over the hall? Well, it's yes. just... That's Court of Health. It's yeah, there's, there's a lot, a lot of, of miscellaneous files. There's a lot of files in there. Mm -hmm. A lot of files. Mm -hmm. yeah. Files from what? I don't know whether it's long-term storage or whether that's regular use or whether they're Board of no. Health. And right now, it. there's Board of Health files, uh, ZBA files, and a couple of other miscellaneous yeah. mm -hmm. files. Got some files right there, too. Mm -hmm. uh, they look just like that. From what, they, from what Emma had said, there's quite a bit of cleaning out that needs to be done. Well, like I was just going to say, how yeah. much, how much, could be. How what many needs files to be cleaned out and what needs to be scanned. Well, <laughs> that, that's Scanner, the, folks, how yeah. long have we had it now? <laughs> we really need yeah, to get on we, that. Well, we don't need that level of scanning for what, yeah. lot of, of what we need. I know in our, uh, what we have to store, keep a lot of things for seven years, but not longer yeah. than that, right. or until the end of the successful audit, and yeah. we keep it a bit longer than that. So when we put boxes down now, we'll say what the destruction date is. Right. But then there's others, just looks just, you know, it's just arbitrarily that the starting state says, keep those forever. And that's, that's it's, it's crazy, and we, we couldn't, can't even understand the logic of, of some of it. Yeah. And we're working on, if it, apparently, if we can scan those in and have them say, that's saved, and we don't actually have to keep the original paper anymore. I'm not sure that's true of all yeah. departments, no, but they need to copy, keep. But but it's, laser it, it's true of some of it. Yeah. So we could be... It, that, that's all looking forward, though. That's not helping you with today's problem. So going back to, to what Christian is saying, I, I agree. I, let, let's just get it done tonight. Yeah. So I'm more than happy to agree on the park and rec to me is a non-issue. And so if I can condense what I think I heard about the more, you know, problematic area, which is the, the remodeling at, between the assessors, right? Mm -hmm. So it sounds, what I'm hearing is that we're spending a certain amount of money exactly. to gain a second formal meeting room and to provide the Board of Health with privacy that they don't currently enjoy. Okay. Right. That's the, because that's what I was trying to get at is wh yeah. what's the point of us spending the money at all? And then to consolidate the files here. Here, in one in place. One spot, yeah. the, so the, the downside of that is it costs money. <laughs> so that we don't do have. we have a sense of the, of the 13 that Gary threw out? How much is related uh, to that? Uh, let's see here. I mean, to me, that's the value proposition. It's worth spending X to get that. And, um, probably the, the electrical is 2500 I would say like 1700 of that. That's what you're talking about. So because like the big expense is the safe. The big expense is the safe. Which is going to have to happen for the park and rec. Yeah. yeah. Plus the 200. So we look at 4,000 of the safe. Okay. And is it possible, David, that we could, and again, I know it's February and we've got a long way to go to June yeah. 30th, but maybe we could approach the finance committee? Because, I mean, I think that they may want to be looking at that. That meeting room might be of value to them as well. Yeah, you so know, the reserve fund I'm talking about. Right, the reserve fund. Uh, I, was, I was thinking of other operating budgets that we could go to, to where we. Well, that's where we go first. But yeah. I mean, you just said you're worried that we may not quite have the 13 yeah, so if we were to go. Well, people were talking us coming up with alternative uh, funding scenarios. Um, I mean, I think I think the ears Yeah, you heard the. the yeah. <laughs> Real uh, first, first of all, I, d I don't have access to these numbers, and uh, I think that this is a situation where I really need to be brought into the loop in terms of these cost estimates. Uh, I cannot help. But that should be well, Gary. That conversation is for Gary. Yeah. 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 I think the last two meetings ago, we were at tops of 20,000, we're down to 13,000. So, I mean, they're, they're narrowing it down. So. so so we have 11. Okay, call 11 2. Mm -hmm. We just heard a price of 13 2, so we're $2,200 in the shortfall. So I think I can probably take it from Interior Maintenance Town Hall. Does Planning Board have any money besides 
No, they don't have anybody. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's How about uh, so I mean, I think our maintenance since they're going to well, be out? But we're doing Where are we? Yeah. We're doing library. Can't spend that twice. I mean, uh, not to throw around tons of, I don't want to throw out new ideas here, but, you know, the planning board is not going to be in that fairly sizable office a lot of the time. I mean, can we do anything to make that a high, you know, board of health office with the scanner in there or something? Or they all meet on they Tuesday meet nights. Yeah. yeah. That was my. That was going to be my next statement. I know. Is there any way that one of one of these boards could meet on a Wednesday night with us? No. Well, you know, even though Why it's not? a big room, there's oh, it's used up by files. You know? It is okay. And that's the issue. You're not going to have much room left over. It's not like it's because of chairs. With every, it's files. There again, we go back to the whole issue with the storage of all these documents that. I mean, it was my room too. I'd love to get rid of back my back room. Mm -hmm. It's all paper. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a motion that we <coughs> approve the plan as presented, subject to David being able to find the full funding. And we need to remove the counter from the assessors in order to make the, their workspace. Yeah, I think work. that's a great idea because mm -hmm. I mean. <coughs> We're not trying to make them alone miserable. We're trying to make everybody as happy as possible, and I don't Did think that's. Say we're trying to make everybody. everybody miserable. Miserable. <laughs> 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 that's way too yeah. <laughs> I was getting there. Just, <laughs> just saying, it's going to happen every year, and everybody. But let's all remember, it's not yeah. going to be forever. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, if we so. can, if we can find that extra square footage by getting rid of the counter and putting a window sure. or a half door, then let's right. let's do it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the needs of the many outweigh the needs right. of the few and the one. All right. Do you want to finish that? Is that is that I the total? Motion. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? I. All those in favor? That's it. Aye. 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 Is that an aye? I'm gonna. I'm gonna say no. <laughs> I was waiting for the no. All right. Portal. Portal one. Right. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Thank you. So let us move forward. Um, Last but not least, do you, do you have anything in your administrator's report you want to talk well, about? Before we leave that, we have the uh, proposal from the auctioneer. Yeah. Oh. Where's that? Where's that? Uh, seven two there. Oh, auctioneer proposal. Sorry. It says the auctioneer. Okay. Um, I, I think David Phil should. Uh, run the indoor flea market for a weekend or two. Get rid of the rest of the junk in the senior center. It's fine with me. <laughs> so basically Douglas Auctioneers is saying that when when you're done with the building, when you've left it for the last time, they'll come in and they'll auction everything out. And Whatever's left. <coughs> on site and they'll keep 25% of the proceeds. Is that acceptable to the select board? There's, there's really nothing Sounds on the great site. Done like a dinner. Right. Yeah. It, it's oh, just going to cost us money to the dumpster things to get rid of that stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, motion. Make a motion that we accept the Douglas auction pr proposal. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can we just ask for a mo as much advance notice as we can so that we can publish this and mm -hmm. yeah. advertise it and whatever mm -hmm. else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is going to be after April 1st, we think? After everybody's kind of moved out? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you'll, you. you'll walk away for the last time, you turn the key, and then call Douglas. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Leave everything in the hallway on the way out, and that's it. After tax day, that way people yeah. can come spend their refunds. Yes. There you <laughs> so I need the select board to take a vote to uh, the contents of the uh, senior center and its fixtures after April first will be surplus. We did that last time. You did. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well done. I'm we're smarter all than all I look. <laughs> <laughs> I think we we're all a little foggy to our average. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please yeah. say that. Okay, okay, so just the highlights of David's, is that what you said, or yes, we're all the, set? Just the highlights just of your report. Oh, okay. all right. We all don't need to rehash. Uh, all budget all the time, how about that? Uh, so yeah. next, oh, are we meeting next week or the week after? Next, next week. week. The 13th, right? Okay. 13th. And so we're going to have the budget roll up yeah. then? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. So With the... Uh, um, 
finance. So is it six o'clock meeting? Sorry. Because we swapped the tri board. Are we meeting at yeah. six? Right. On the thirteenth. Let's do six thirty. Six thirty. Yeah. Six thirty is already. Yeah. All right. Six thirty. Six. Jennifer, you got that at six thirty. I'm so sorry. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday for six thirty, please. I have it now. Yes. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's okay. No, just for you should know. Yes. 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 Six thirty for mm -hmm. for tri board. Yes, please. Yes, and then 6.30 on the 27th to discuss the senior city bid, senior center bids. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. You want to do, yeah, that, whenever you guys want, I guess. Okay. That's what y'all voted on. Yeah, we voted on last week. On 6.30, okay. Yeah, we okay. did. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I've been working on the FY 2020 budget. Uh, it's a tough budget. This is going to be... Uh, an exercise of trying to minimize the pain. A lot of people made very reasonable requests of the budget based upon their needs, based upon all the work that we've done. Um, I'm going to have to s defer a lot of that to the special town meeting in order to make sure that we can come in with a, with a balanced budget. Uh, I'll give you all the details in the in, in next Wednesday, but uh, this is a tough, tough exercise, and uh, I just want to commend the departments for all the work that they've done, and I'm trying to say yes to as many as of mine as I possibly can. Um, David, you had a question about the North Hadley Village Hall sale update, so we've asked for the historic preservation restriction to be updated. We've given them uh, the Municipal Building Committee and the Historic Commission no later than February 22nd to complete their work. I know that they're working on it actively, and at that point then we'll engage the realtor to put it on the market. Yeah, I was going to meet with the realtor at some point just to kind of touch base and make sure they're clear on the needs of the proposal and all that kind of stuff. If anybody else wants to join me, they're more than welcome to. The needs to. of the proposal? Yeah, mainly the title search and that kind of thing. Make sure they're clear on that. Because that is part I of think their there work. Was a, I thought they already did all yeah, the committee did, did a title all. search on that. No, we have no, no title on it. Title. No, because it was just... But that, that was part of their uh, bid. But that's part, of the, that's part of the oh, bid. Yeah. So okay. I want to either make sure they're clear, or if they're not clear, we're going to have to figure something out with that. Uh, so another news is fit to print. The website is launched now at www.hadleyma.org. And I'd like to publicly acknowledge all of the work that Jennifer James put into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Excellent job. Looks <laughs> much yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that project is now substantially complete. Uh, went off with uh, very few problems. A lot of work on your part in order to coordinate the departments. Uh, now we have much more functionality on the website, a lot more information that's up to date. We should enter the website into the contest that MMA runs every year. Absolutely. So, I think right. the yellow's a killer. That, that's actually, <laughs> that was David and Christian fought for that yellow. Actually, it was David and Christian fought for that yellow. They made sure it was spot on. <laughs> there you go. Back and forth. Uh, Chris Okafor and I went to both the MS4 uh, meeting down in Springfield as well as in the city of Greenfield to uh, get an update on the Greenfield Anaerobic Digester project. This is a project that's still in its planning and feasibility stage, but the idea is that the city of Greenfield would build two anaerobic digesters at their current wastewater treatment facility and then accept sludge Thank from you. Uh, surrounding towns, including Hadley, thus reducing sludge hauling and disposal costs for all the participating municipalities. Still in the planning stage, the most aggressive construction pro uh, schedule I saw said that they'd be breaking ground no sooner than 2021, and that's probably way too early. But something to keep on, the, uh, on our horizon because it would substantially reduce our sludge hauling costs. The FY 2018 audit is still in process. I have a letter for you, Joyce, to sign. I think I signed all letters tonight. Okay. And then we have town meeting warrant uh, closes on February 13th. February 14th is the last day to take out papers for 
our local election and to turn them back in February 19th. Uh, March 10th, we heard Alan Weinberg talk about the, uh, the uh, presentation about the Hooker School. April 9th, annual elections, and May 2nd is our annual town meeting. David, I didn't see anything in here about the um, Laserfish project. Right, that's still ongoing right now, so I'm still preparing that application. Oh, I thought that, that was due in January. It's opened in January, due on February 15th. Oh, it opened in January, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we need that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. Short and we did Well, we did have March 1st as the Senior Center groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. And March 15th, the move of departments and programs currently in the Senior Center. May 1st, demolition of Hooker School. June 1st, library groundbreaking. And July 1st, fire substation groundbreaking. We kind of staggered all the projects. Uh, I had any other announcements from anybody? I have a couple. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So on behalf of our town clerk, um, just a reminder to turn in your census, um, either electronically or via mail, ASAP. And just a reminder, the importance of the census um, does, it, it plays a part in our state aid. So it's critically important that um, everybody turn it in. And then, as David said, just yet another reminder that February 14th, Valentine's Day is the last day to obtain papers if you're interested in running for public office. And the 19th is the uh, return date to the registrars. All of the information's online about what positions are up for election. Um, kind of the, the key positions, we have uh, two select board seats, we have one planning board seat, we, we have the town moderator, uh, we have Trustee at least library. one school committee member, and is it one or two trustees? Yeah, it's at least one. At least one trustee. Yeah. So these are all vitally important positions, and if anybody's interested in throwing their hat in the ring, February 14th is your deadline. All right, perfect. I got one. Mm -hmm. um, community alert system, we're starting with DPW uh, notifications. So um, if you want to text 888-777, just text them Hadley DPW, and you can sign up. And thank you for using me as one of the guinea pig testers. Yes. <laughs> I really three appreciated eight, three all sevens. the pothole information eight, 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 today. 777, seven, seven. <laughs> that's the number. Six, six digits only, and okay. I've been bombarding Molly with fake uh, complaints about <laughs> potholes oh, and, uh, <laughs> and trees falling down all day long today. <laughs> nice. Hadley DPW, any spaces? And it works, right? It's all one word, Hadley. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, anybody else? Uh, I have just one. Uh, condolence tonight, uh, Chuck Bowles, Charles Bowles has uh, passed away and uh, he was, uh, came to this area in 1978 and was, was quite a businessman for our area, for Hadley, living in Hadley and he had redone the Johnson House over in Hockenham and uh, was quite well present over there. He had Interstate 91, you know, that was a big Interskate, Interskate 91, Interskate 91 yeah. um, which was very popular back in the city, and it still is. Still is. It still um, is. It's, it's, it's been a stronghold for the Hampshire Mall over there, to tell you the truth. And he had many businesses and restaurants in the area. Um, the year that he was our moderator was a, a fun year. He was a great moderator. Um, he brought life to the town meeting for sure. So with that, I. I pass my condolences on to Donna, Michael, and Christopher, and family, and um, uh, you certainly will be missed by many people. So. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Um, See you next week.